Hi, welcome. Uh, today we'll be presenting data modeling of managed objects in OpenIDM. And uh, this is what we'll be covering. What is data modeling? How do I implement my data model in OpenIDM? How do I store data in OpenIDM? And how do I access the data in OpenIDM? So what is data modeling? It's just a conceptual model of how data items relate to each other. So uh, uh, you have real world data items that you can represent as uh, in object oriented programming as classes and databases as tables. So classic example is employee department relationship. Employee has a name, address, and um, you know, other properties and department has an ID and a name. And what are managed objects? They are external users or groups that are stored in ID, OpenIDM's repository. So, uh, and they're called managed because OpenIDM is, uh, is the one managing those uh, objects. All right, so there are two ways you can model data in OpenIDM. Uh, one is by using default mapping and the other is called explicit mapping. So in default mapping, you really do not have to create any kind of data model in OpenIDM. You use what, is, what comes out of box from OpenIDM. So all your data is stored in a couple of tables as JSON objects. And uh, in explicit mapping, you're allowed to um, set up your own schema with your own table structure, foreign keys, primary keys, indexes, and all that stuff. So it's great for when you have a complex uh, um, ERD relationship that you need to represent in OpenIDM. So again, like I mentioned, default mapping would be great if you're doing like a demo or a test system with not a whole lot of data or not a very complex data model. No setup is needed, that's a big pro. And the con is it's not really scalable for a large amount of data. In explicit mapping, it's scalable, but uh, the con is you do have to go set up everything in OpenIDM's repository. And then uh, I'll show you the files that you would need to modify to map the JSON objects to those um, tables. And uh, the, file, the file is located in configuration directory and it's called the repo jdbc.json. And there's another related file called manage.json that you will need to modify. And we'll go over in the next couple of screens on uh, how to do that. Here I'm just uh, displaying how we store uh, data in OpenIDM. So uh, we'll go over more on, I'll show you in a real world example of using uh, a Postman REST client or uh, you can use your Firefox REST client if needed on storing and retrieving data in OpenIDM. The important pieces are of course uh, setting up your URL endpoints and your uh, methods and your properties. So this is a uh, the repo.jdbc.json file. It's basically um, OpenIDM stores its connection information to your uh, OpenIDM's repository. It has some information on uh, preset queries that you can use against that repository. And the important part is the explicit tables, the resource mappings, which uh, we are talking about is uh, as you can see, there's the default, which right now you don't have to uh, change anything. It's all the objects that you store in OpenIDM are stored in those two tables, the managed object table and managed object properties table. But if you have, if you want to set up your own explicit mapping, you would have to go to the next section there called explicit mapping, and you can name uh, the mapping whichever name you want. Uh, if you want to call it, let's say in my case here, user special. And the important part is uh, making sure that you are uh, matching your object property names to your column, table column names. So it's a one-to-one -one match. Uh, you can name the object properties, uh, any name that you want, but the column names do have to match your table. Um, so here I'll give you an example of how a user would be represented in a table and how a REST endpoint would be uh, retrieving the data 
be a JSON object and those would be the properties of the JSON object. It's pretty straightforward. You would have for every table you would have a match and your next question would be how do I actually do some complex relationship um, rep representation. You're, you're obviously not just going to be using one-to-one -one matching and for that we'll discuss in the next section on how to set up custom endpoints, hooks, script hooks, which you can write a little bit of groovy code to do what you need to do in terms of you know joining tables or uh, getting information that is more related. But in this case, if you do have to uh, execute some special queries, there is a section here where you can write your own presets SQL queries and I'll, I'll talk more about how you can call those preset SQL queries via custom endpoints as well. And this is the other related file that we talked about called manage.json. Think of it as a catalog of all your man managed, managed objects. It's basically uh, object and its method representation. So in our case, a user object, you, you can have methods for it like on creation what, what script you need to call on deletion, on validation. If if you have any special scripting that's not default, this is where you need to set it up. And uh, when you do create an object or um, validate or delete an object, those will be triggered. So that's really the importance of it. And uh, if you have your mapping with a different name, you do have to specify it in that JSON string, like just like they're shown in the in the section there. So in our case, uh, let's say if it was manage user special, then you need to go, go down here and specify the managed object with that name called user special. You don't have to uh, you don't have to do anything more than that. And once you do save it, OpenIDM will pick up that change. And now you're ready to go uh, to your REST client browser uh, to execute some uh, uh, REST calls against these uh, managed endpoints. So I'm using Chrome's Postman REST client. And uh, you can look up the endpoint in the documentation, but here it is. It's for user creation. It's pretty simple. It's a post method and you need to have the headers which have the user ID, password, and this would be your JSON body. So here I'm uh, showing how to create a user with some basic attributes. And once you do that, you hit send and it'll create the user. In a few minutes, you'll see the response that OpenIDM gives you. And again, it's important to specify this. Uh, these headers for you to have access. So here it is, uh, the JSON response. As you notice, there are some other extraneous attributes that we won't talk about here, but uh, the important thing, as you can see, the password has been already encrypted before it sent back to you. And it gives you some default role assignments upon user creation. and some other attributes that you can set up in your default creation. And this is the call to get the user in you, that you just created. You need to specify a user ID that you created with. And uh, the get method and the header is the same headers that you used. And here it is, the user you just created. So we just demonstrated how to store data and uh, retrieve it. So the, that's the power of open IDM. So your next next question may be, okay, how do I leverage my UI? So if you have a model view controller UI, all you need to do is put that, these rest endpoint calls in that UI and uh, make them part of some actions. And so your UI is totally agnostic to how your data is stored and retrieved. So it's, it's it makes the whole thing really simple and powerful as well at the same time. Thank you for listening.